The premise of the story is set around a suburban town named Chester's Mill. At first glance, it looks like any normal place, but what happens next is going to shock this quiet, small town. In the opening scene, we are introduced to a non-local named Barbie. He is in the woods, burying the dead body of a man. Barbie's injured forehead suggests he got into a fight with the dead man, but the cause of the murder is unknown. In the afternoon, Barbie is heading away from the town when he comes across the sheriff's car. It makes him nervous, which further diverts his attention from the road. When he finally loses the policeman, some cows block his way. Barbie swerves the car and lands in a field with cows. His vehicle takes a spin, but he comes out uninjured. A few seconds pass before the town is hit by an earthquake. The people freeze in shock as the ground shakes violently. Then, all of a sudden, something drops from the sky in front of Barbie and everything goes silent. A cow falls to the ground after being sliced in half by whatever substance fell from the sky. Barbie investigates to discover it is an invisible wall. It was so sharp that it even cut the houses that it touched. A teenager named Joe comes to Barbie to see if he is alright. He is also just as surprised about the strange invisible wall. Following that, the sheriff and deputy, Linda, are informed that the power supply to the entire town has been cut off. The phone lines are dead, and the internet doesn't work either. It is as if all satellite connections have been lost at the same time. Then, an airplane flying over the town crashes into the invisible barrier, confirming it is actually a dome and not just a wall. The following explosion causes people to panic. On the radio station, a DJ named Phil and his assistant, Dodie, are trying to establish a connection outside. They're confused because they're the only ones on air right now. Phil looks at the bright side, saying this means their ratings will go up. A fire truck comes from the other side of the dome, but Barbie stops it before it crashes. The police arrive and investigate the wall, but its existence is beyond their understanding. The town's councilman, Big Jim, also arrives at the same time, but is just as confused as the others. The group is informed that every road leading to the town is closed, which is causing several accidents. To stop such accidents further, they will have to issue an emergency announcement immediately. Somewhere else, two youngsters named Junior and Angie are enjoying a romantic morning together. Angie is also Joe's elder sister, who works as a volunteer nurse. In the heat of the moment, Junior confesses that he is in love with Angie. His heart breaks when she says she doesn't feel the same. They get into an argument that ends when Angie spontaneously slaps him and storms off. That could have gone better for Junior. A family of three, mothers Carolyn and Alice, and their daughter Nori, are also visiting the town for work. They plan to leave as soon as possible. Unaware of the dome covering the town, another notable figure of Chester's Mill is an investigative reporter named Julia. One morning, she is called by a woman to report suspicious activity. The woman has seen six tanks of propane being supplied to the town's reserve this week. It is too much stock for fuel, which she thinks is being collected for an ulterior purpose. Julia promises to investigate the matter, but doesn't think much of it. The councilman, Big Jim, goes to the radio station and announces the state of emergency to the people. Carolyn listens to it, but thinks it is some kind of advertisement. Seconds before they are about to crash into the dome, a car from the other side does. The family is safe, but Nori goes into a seizure right then. While she is unconscious, she says something about a pink star. She is immediately rushed to the hospital, which is filled with survivors from the crashes happening around the town. Julia and Barbie are also at the hospital to see her husband. Julia finds out that her husband never works on Sundays and has been lying to her. Outside, Barbie meets Angie and talks to her over cigarettes. Junior sees them together and is filled with jealousy. Over time, his love for Angie has turned into an obsession, and seeing her with another man triggers something inside of him. By now, the borders of the town are being guarded by the military. Several scientists and experts are trying to find out what might have caused the strange phenomenon, but no one has the answers. A few hours later, Big Jim meets the sheriff and asks him about the propane. They vaguely talk about everything they have done to save the town. It is clear that they know something about the dome, but they refrain from talking about the matter. Barbie was supposed to be in the town for only a day and has no place to stay. At night, Junior approaches him and starts a conversation which eventually turns into a threat. Barbie is confused about what he did wrong, but the commotion is cut short when Julia interferes. 
Somewhere else, the teens are partying, ignoring the state of emergency. Joe meets a guy his age, and the two talk about the situation. Suddenly, he goes into a seizure and says something about the pink stars, like Nori did earlier. His sister Angie is in her house. When Junior barges in and kidnaps her, he brings her to his father's old fallout shelter and claims that he knows what is going on. It is then revealed that his father is Big Jim. He was always paranoid about her safety, which is why he built the shelter. In the meantime, Julia brings Barbie to her house and lets him stay the night. Everything goes well until he sees the picture of her husband and realizes it is the man he killed that morning. Linda and the sheriff are on a patrol when the sheriff's pacemaker bursts and kills him in the process. A flashback from the morning shows us that Barbie was in the town to meet Julia's husband and talk to him about some kind of payment. The doctor didn't want to pay, which caused a fight, and Barbie accidentally shot him dead. Even though it was only an accident, he knew he was going to be convicted. Hence, to avoid it, Barbie disposed of the body. In the morning, he notices that his necklace is missing and asks Julia about it. She promises to keep an eye out for it, but Barbie realizes he left it in the cabin where he killed her husband. Somewhere else, two policemen come running to the sheriff, but by now, he is already dead. Linda cries, holding him in her arms. Joe is with his friend Ben, who helped him when he got a seizure last night. Ben asks him what he meant by the pink star, but Joe doesn't remember saying anything after he fell to the ground. In the radio station, Dodie manages to connect with the people outside of the dome. Using a special device, she can hear the soldiers talking to each other but cannot talk to them. Till now, even the soldiers are confused about what the invisible thing is. At the town's diner, Big Jim is enjoying breakfast before Linda arrives and informs him of the sheriff's death. They immediately rush to the town's mortician, Lester. In the bunker, Angie tries her best to call for someone but is unsuccessful. When Junior arrives, he chains her down to a bed. He thinks that Angie's rejection and the dome's appearance are somehow related, and when the dome goes away, she will return back to her normal self. The comment is enough evidence of his mental issues. The mortician Lester used to be the sheriff's friend and is shocked to hear about his death. But when Linda is not around, he and Big Jim reveal they know something about the propane import that happened last month. They, together with the sheriff, were hiding a secret from the town. The sheriff's death confirms he won't tell anyone about their involvement, which is good news for them. Later that day, Linda walks into the police station to see Big Jim looking for something in the sheriff's office. On being asked, Jim says he came to take a look at his will, and Linda believes him. In reality, he was there to find paperwork about the propane import that might get him and Lester in trouble. He thinks the papers are in the sheriff's house and makes Lester get them. Somewhere else, Julia goes to the radio tower and finds out they can listen to the soldiers talking outside the dome. Through the device, they figure out people are trying to dig under the dome, but are unsuccessful. Julia broadcasts the news to the town through the radio. The information causes people to panic, which, in turn, makes them irrational. Joe and Ben are near the border, watching scientists outside doing their job. They're trying to see if water has any effect on the dome. They reach no definite conclusion, but Joe finds out the dome works as a very thick sieve. Later that day, Barbie goes to the cabin to look for his necklace. He finds it, but Junior spots him right after. He calls him out for sleeping with Angie. Barbie figures out the guy is delusional, but cannot get him to go away. They get into a fight, and Barbie overpowers him easily. After that, we see Lester breaking into the sheriff's house to look for the papers about the propane import. He finds them under a drawer and lights them on fire, but the plan backfires when the flames spread and take over the entire house. Soon, several people gather around the house trying to put the fire out, but without the help of a fire truck, it is almost impossible. If they let the house burn down, the temperature inside the dome will rise and eventually kill everyone. Barbie leads the people who join hands to bring water to the house. Linda hears Lester's voice and runs inside to save him. She drags him out of the place before handing him to the paramedics. Even after an hour of trying to put the fire out, it only spreads further. Then, Jim comes with a loader and finally ends the commotion. As the tired civilians gather up, one of the policemen named Paul loses his mind. He claims that they will never get out of this situation and is afraid they will start killing each other soon. 
he fires a shot into the air which bounces back from the dome and hits a fellow officer he dies right after and paul is arrested when it gets dark joe and his friends go skating he is approached by nori who wants to recharge her phone he brings her to his home which is one of the places that has a generator Meanwhile, Linda brings Paul to the jail, while a crowd of people criticizes the police system and protests outside the station. Jim calms them down, asking them to help each other in the time of need. After being locked, Paul goes into cardiac arrest. Linda immediately runs to him, only to find out that he is faking. He takes the chance to push her aside and run away, after locking her in. In the bunker, Junior approaches Angie again. She has realized that she needs to manipulate him to let her free. Hence, she tells him about the closed tunnel they used to go to as kids. The dome might not work in the tunnel, which means they can go outside. Angie hopes he will free her now that she is helping him. But, Junior wants to go to the tunnel alone. Jim goes to the police station and finds Linda locked up instead of Paul. He lets her out, and they discover Paul is left with a rifle and bullets. Linda immediately gets to looking for the criminal, knowing that he must be in the forest where he frequently goes hunting. Meanwhile, Jim organizes a search party. Carolyn is at the diner, worried for Nori. She has stayed the night at Joe's without telling her mothers. Jim arrives at the diner and asks people to join the search party for Paul. He also makes Barbie join them since he was a good leader when the house was on fire. They make it to the forest where Barbie shows his expertise and reveals he used to be in the military. Junior is on his way to the tunnel when Julia notices him. She asks him where he is going with the backpack, but he answers her nervously, which makes her suspicious. She follows him and reaches the tunnel. Joe and Nori are having breakfast at Joe's house. He is nervous because he has never been alone with a girl prior to this. Nori, on the other hand, is confident and witty. As they talk, Ben brings in two more girls to charge their phones. He wants to use the generator to impress them, unaware that it is an important commodity. Joe has to reluctantly let them in. In the woods, the search party runs into Paul, who shoots a guy in his leg. A second guy stays to take care of him, while Jim and Barbie run behind Paul. In the tunnels, Junior reaches the end and finds out the dome runs through it as well. He gets too close to the wall, which makes his flashlight burst like the sheriff's pacemaker. Julia comes out to warn him, but he is not happy that she followed him. Junior loses his mind and starts punching the invisible wall until Julia stops him. They sit down to talk and rest for a while. Julia tells him that she is stuck in her lousy job as a journalist because of a mistake she made in the past. As they chat, Junior reveals that his bruises were caused by Barbie. He asks her to stay away from the guy, making it seem like Barbie hit him for no reason. By now, Joe's house is filled with people using his electronics. A bully tries to make people pay for the electricity that he doesn't even own. When no one stands against him, Nori takes the matters into her own hands. The conversation gets heated, but before anything happens, the lights go out. Nori is happy that Joe stood up for her. Meanwhile, in the woods, Barbie and Jim bump into their target, but are stuck because Paul also has his rifle out. He is seconds away from killing Jim when Linda appears behind and shoots him dead. At Joe's house, Carolyn arrives and asks her daughter to be more responsible. Joe and Nori hold hands, which creates strange sparks and sends them both into a seizure. They again collectively chant about some kind of pink stars falling in line. In the bunker, Junior visits Angie again, this time with a first aid kit. She helps him dress the wounds on his knuckles, but secretly keeps a pair of scissors to herself. In the last scene, Julia and Barbie are home after a long day. Julia has started to suspect him. After what Junior told her, when he is in the shower, she goes through his belongings. 